Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be talking about the TB55 and TB50 battery, specifically relating to the DJI Inspire 2 and the Matrice 200 series. Now first of all I'm not going to get into all of the noise and everything that's been going on. All I'm going to say is obviously users of both of these drones would have been made aware this week that DJI are recommending they take caution with these batteries a minute and monitor the voltages and I am going to explain what I think you should be doing as well as what DJI have said to do and give you guys some tips to get the best possible performance out of these batteries because the, to be honest I feel that people don't check their voltages on their batteries enough anyway so in this video I'm going to take you through what you need to do what you should be checking just to make sure you get the best possible performance out of your aircraft. So just regards to the two different batteries, the Matrice 200 series will use the TB55 and the TB50 battery, whereas the Inspire 2 will only use the TB50 because it can't take the extra width on the back. Now, DJI have said that people should monitor their voltages whilst using these batteries on their aircraft. Now, what they mean is don't just rely on the built-in battery meter. Now, all of these batteries from DJI, all of the smart batteries have these lovely built-in features like the power button as you have on the Mavic 2 battery and you have a nice quick indication of charge. However, these should not be taken as gospel. These are an indication. The only thing that will give you the most and most reliable information is the actual overall battery voltages and the cell voltages. And if you keep an eye on them, you really won't have any problems. So so the first thing DJI are saying is don't rely on these two bits of information that you get on front of the battery on the TB50 especially. It is an indication but that is all it is. If it shows your battery is fully charged make sure you are checking it in the app. Now the one big thing to mention before we get into this is make sure that everything is on the same firmware. Whereas they're not saying at the moment what firmware you should be on but just make sure that everything is on the correct level. So if you put your batteries in your aircraft and it's saying it's got a mismatched module make sure you update it and make sure you do that swipe whilst on the ground and let it update the firmware. Another thing with the Inspire 2 is it uses batteries in pairs so make sure you do stick to the right pairs as well and I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of this video. So let's get on and have a look at the voltages themselves. Okay so before we look at the flight voltages the first thing I'd recommend is checking your battery firmware if you can. Now you can't do this on the normal Go 4 app however if you have a Crystal Sky or an Android device with the DJI Pilot app you can check it in there. And to do this you go into the Pilot app and make sure it connects. You then go into settings go down to the bottom option and click about and under here it will show you the firmware version for battery 1 and battery 2 and the advantage to that is you can quickly check that both batteries are on the correct firmware version. Now if your aircraft is on version 01020200 the correct battery firmware is 01.00.00.67 so just make sure that your batteries are showing on the correct firmware and you can do that via the pilot app. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the voltages and have a look at what they mean and what you need to be checking. Now, as with all DJI's lovely aircraft, you have this nice and simple percentage up here. So we've got 45 on one and 35 on another, sorry, 39 on the other. And then you've got this lovely flight time remaining along here. But just like on any device, percentage values and time remaining are never guaranteed. If you've got a laptop, you'll know that it'll tell you you've got an hour left and then 10 minutes later, there's nothing. So these things, whilst they are good and for the most part accurate they should never be taken as a hundred percent perfect and this is where you need to be checking your voltages now on the home screen just next to the percentages you can see that it will show you your voltage next to each one so next to my top battery at 44 percent i got 3.80 and then on my next battery at 39 percent i've got 3.81 so they are showing different capacities and voltages and that the is giving you your lowest average cell voltage so in in flight that is a really quick way of making sure your battery voltage is correct. Now there are a few very simple rules you need to follow here. Number one, at takeoff your battery should always be fully charged. That should be at least 4.25 volts per cell. If your battery is below 
4.25 volts per cell, then your battery is not fully charged. The best way to check this is go into your battery screen, look at your battery one and battery two. So charge your battery on your DJI charger, make sure it's 100%. You can check it on the indicators on the side of the battery, making sure that the lights are showing correct, but don't rely on that 100%. Before you take off, come into your battery screen and look and check that your battery cell voltages are all at least 4.25 volts per cell. Now on the TB50, you'll find these are actually HV LiPos, so they'll actually be between 4.25 and 4.35. However, at minimum, 4.25 volt. Make sure both batteries are the same. Never fly if one battery is less than the other in the sense of one's 4.25 and one is 4.1. That is a different scenario and that is not good. You want to make sure they are both between 4.25 and 4.35 volts. The next thing to be looking at is that they are all the same on each cell and make sure that the battery balance is okay. Now your batteries will never be a hundred percent. There will always be a slight variance. However that variance should be no more than 0.1 volt per cell in my opinion. Anything between 0.01 and 0.05 is 100% fine. You will always get a little bit. Anything between 0.05 and 0.1 is where you want to start keeping an eye on it because that's leading you into an area that there could be an issue. If it is more than 0.1, then you need to stop and take a close look at that battery. I would suggest cycling it first down to say 30% and back up. And if that don't work, then make sure that you stack it to the side and don't use it until it's been checked over. Um, when you look at mine, you can say I've got 3.80, 3.80 or 7.9. We're, we're, we're all between 0.01 and 0.02. That is perfectly fine. So I'm happy that both of those batteries are correct. But it is important that you check this stuff on the ground before you take off. Because whilst having 100% here and here is a nice quick indication, you can just as easily see if those voltages are 4.25 or more. And by doing that, you know that your voltages are correct. And if they're not 4.25, don't take off. Don't fly. Investigate and have a look what's going on. The last thing on the voltages to mention is landing voltage. You want to be landing your batteries by 3.70 volt per cell. So again, you can go back into your battery screen and check it, but when your voltage up here gets to 3.70 volts, you want to be getting that aircraft on the ground. Now, it is worth taking into account, if you're doing sport mode pushes or punch outs or you're increasing altitude or moving forward, your voltages will sag up and down a little bit and expect to see these go from green into the amber. However, if all your battery voltages are sagging a lot, down into the red continuously even in hover something is wrong and you want to get it on the ground to check it put your aircraft into a hover let it stabilize for five seconds and have a look at what your voltage is then if you start seeing them really dropping below that 3.70 get it down asap it's a possible indication that something is going on Overall, the whole idea of monitoring battery voltages is because it gives you a true indication of what is going on with your battery. As I've said, these will go up and down a bit like you used to get on, on your hi-fi. We used to see your uh, bars going up and down. However, the reality is you should see a good pattern. And if you do this regularly, you will get to know it. I'm in and out of this screen continuously in flight. I've got it mapped to one of my back buttons. I'm checking it every minute or so. There is no time in flight that I'm not keeping an eye on my battery voltages. And if I'm not in this screen here, I'm keeping an eye on them up there. As long as you are aware of what they should be and anything that looks untoward, then you shouldn't have problems. Now, this information stands across the board for any aircraft, and it really does. It doesn't matter if it's a DJI drone or not DJI drone. The basics are always the same. A normal LiPo is 4.2 volts fully charged. These ones from DJI, like the TB50, is a HV LiPo, so it will be a higher voltage up to 4.35 volts per cell. But again, DJI state that they class fully charged as above 4.25 volts. And as long as you put your batteries in the aircraft, you are checking for that voltage, you shouldn't have any issues. Okay, so just to finish this video up, I'm gonna take you through some of my recommendations before I end it. Now, these are what I personally do and I have never had an issue. Obviously, 
people will have their own ways of doing things, but this is my way to ensure that I don't get problems. The first and the most important one to me is never fly a battery that has been flown before. So if it has been used once, even if it's taken 10% out of it, it goes on the side until it's been recharged. And only ever fly a freshly fully charged battery. When I say freshly fully charged, I fly all of my packs within 48 hours. If I am not going to fly within 48 hours, that battery does not go into the aircraft for a long flight. What I would do after 48 hours is put it in the aircraft, hover it at about a foot above the ground, get it to below 80% and then fully charge it again before I put it on a flight. Looking at all of the logs I've looked at over the years and all of the issues I've seen with batteries, a common factor has always been people flying a partly charged batteries or batteries that have been left standing for a period of time and have entered self-discharge that is always a big risk on any aircraft so with the dji smart batteries my personal preference is to fully charge it fly it within 48 hours if i haven't flown it it gets discharged and charged again before flying it next time um with regards to the self-discharging on these, you can set them between one and 10 days. Mine are all set to 10 days because I manage them myself. I do not let the aircraft do it for me. However, if you want to know what time to set it yourself, two to three days is a good option based around flying within 48 hours, probably three days. However, if that battery enters self-discharge under no circumstances should it go in that aircraft or it at least not flown out at any distance at that point it's danger will robinson hover it low level one foot above the ground until it gets down to a, a sort of 65 percent and then fully charge it again it's basic things that will make sure that you get the best out of it Finally, with regards to the Inspire 2 specifically, make sure that both batteries are fully charged. Don't go by the lights on the front. Check your voltages. Remember what DJI have said. Fully charged is a battery which is over 4.25 volts per cell. You should be looking for that across all of the six cells on each battery, and both batteries must be at the same level. Now, you can have a slight variance, but they most must both be fully charged. Never put one in at 85% and one in at 100% it is asking for issues keep them in pairs make sure they are kept together charged together and then flown together to make sure that you don't get any problems and lastly as they said you want to be landing at 3.70 volts again that is the minimum you want to be seeing when your battery is rested and on the ground remember your cells will sag up and down a little bit in flight stick it into that hover as i mentioned and then just look at the cells but again don't push them. If you've got multiple packs, you are far better landing, swapping over batteries than literally running them down to the last minute. Yes, they are expensive on this aircraft. However, I'll be honest, if you can afford the aircraft, you're going to need to be able to afford the batteries. It's as simple as that. That's it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. There are some links in the description of this video which uh, shows you these products that you've seen here and it does allow you to purchase them and that helps support the channel and allows me to keep buying products to talk to you guys about. Thank you very much for watching and I will do another video again soon.